that these additional flight forms have contributed immensely to the Air Force's successes and dismissing of Boko Haram insurgents. As the federal government steps up its game towards addressing the challenges of security, President Buhari inducts three brand new helicopter gunships. We promise Nigerians that we will not rest on our hands until we are able to effectively take back every inch of our soil. Two terrorist commanders killed as police reconvenes cash of arms and ammunition at Kuduru Forest Operations in Brenungwari. 74 political parties are hereby deregistered. INEC deregisters 74 political parties for non-performance during the 2019 elections. Plus, update on happenings at the World Paralifting World Cup in Abuja. Hello and welcome to the news at 9 on the network service of the NTA. Of course, you know we are live in Abuja. I am Joseph Johnson. Hinguno John Adams is in Lagos and Pam Dumyam is joining us from Makrdi. Thank you for your company. Three more brand new helicopter gunships have been inducted into inventory of the Nigerian Air Force towards adding impetus to its combat efficiency in addressing the nation's contemporary challenges of security. President Mohamed Buhari, who performed the ceremony at the Eagle Square, helped on the need for operational discipline and strong maintenance culture so that air power can be effectively, efficiently and timely employed in response to the security imperatives of the nation. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. The new platforms inducted into the service of the Nigerian Air Force and indeed Nigeria are two new Augusta 109P gunships as well as MI-171E helicopters designed to perform multi-role capacities including night combat missions, close air support and logistics resupply. The helicopters are meant to enhance the willingness, ability and readiness of the force to effectively deliver service to the nation. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari described the acquisition of the new platform and the ones in last year as imperative towards improving the delivery of robust air power in support of Nigeria's counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency efforts. It is on record that these additional flight forms have contributed immensely to the Air Force's successes and dismissing of Boko Haram insurgents. You will all agree with me that the successes we have achieved so far have restored our pride and honor the world over. Consequently, I want to sincerely thank Nigerians for believing in our government in spite of occasional outrages coming together as a nation irrespective of political religious and ethnic affiliations in our strive to bring this menace to an end. While promising enhanced professionalism and re-equipping of the Nigerian Armed Forces and other security agencies to effectively discharge their duties, the President is assuring the nation that kidnapping and other forms of criminality bedeviling Nigeria will also be contained. We are committed to taking the right steps achieving the desired results. We shall ensure that every sector of our nation experiences the change that we have promised to make the investment climate as friendly as possible for foreign investors and we will strive to maintain this tempo. President Buhari used the forum to upload Nigerian Air Force for playing crucial roles in national security as well as peacekeeping operations on the African continent. Your contributions have not only been a source of pride to us as a nation, but it has also projected us as a reliable regional power. As you fly this aircraft, I wish you safe flying operations, safe skies, 
as well as equal number of takeoffs and landings. With this induction, we expect to receive more hard women feedbacks from the various theaters of operation, and in no distant time, cartel the security menace be doubling our dear nation. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abukar, appreciated the Buhari presidency for his unprecedented support and assistance to the Air Force, saying so far 22 aircrafts have been inducted into its inventory and 17 additional platforms have been expected, including 12 Tucano combat helicopters towards enhancing ongoing kinetic, logistical and humanitarian operations. Closely with our security agencies. We will not relent in our commitment and resolve to further this inherent defeat and deter those seeking to undermine our security, peace, prosperity, and national unity. During the induction ceremony, President Muhammad Buhari undertook a guided tour of the various research and development products produced by the Nigerian Air Force and partners towards bolstering the capacities of the service to support efforts at enhancing national security and stability. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And President Muhammad Buhari has described the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, as a laudable scheme that needs to be sustained for better understanding and appreciation of Nigeria by the youth as future leaders and most productive segment of the society. This was while receiving in audience some core members and management of the scheme on a thank you visit. State House correspondent Adam Sambo again reports. Four NYSC members representing their colleagues nationwide were in the State House to formally convey what they called their deepest gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari over the recent increase in their monthly allowances from 19,800 Naira to 33,000 Naira. Daddy, the implementation of the increment in the month of January, a time we had least expected, drew tears of joy from many of us. Indeed, sir. Some of us had regarded the several promises of increase in our allowance made to us by the Honorable Minister for Youth and Sport Development and the Director General of the NYSC with some doubts. Therefore, Your Excellency, by this singular action, you have demonstrated to us that you are a caring and loving father committed to the welfare of his children. With all sense of responsibility, the core members say the increase in their allowances is a wake-up call to show more commitment to the affairs of their fatherland, saying, as youth, they are greater stakeholders in building a prosperous and united Nigeria. We are the future of this nation, and the future belongs to us. We wish to assure you from our heart of hearts, sir, that we shall, in the spirit of patriotism and renewal, Vigo always abide by the objectives and motto of the scheme in all our conducts. We are highly motivated, sir. May God bless and keep Nigeria as one strong, indivisible entity. The alert started dropping on their phones on Thursday. Throughout Thursday till Friday morning, I kept getting calls. Pictures of core members dancing and praying for you, praying for the country. Some of these clips and videos were simply irresistible. President Muhammad Buhari, who thanked the core members for the show of appreciation, described the scheme as one of the best initiatives for national unity, cohesion, and sustainable future. Whenever I meet uh, uh, General Gawan, up to today, I thank him for starting the NYSC. It's a very, very uh, nationalistic and patriotic uh, thinking that led to the development of the NYSE. It's a fantastic uh, uh, thing that uh, General Gowan has, uh, has done to this country. I feel very strongly that the NYSE should continue. He promised to sustain efforts at making life easier for the core members as future leaders of the country and indeed Nigerians on whose mandate he presides the affairs of Nigeria conscientiously. The core members were accompanied to the State House by the Director General of the NYSC from the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. 
Critical micro and macroeconomic issues dominated discussions as President Muhammad Buhari engaged members of the new Presidential Economic Advisory Council, led by Professor Doin Salami. The President once again gave firm assurance that his administration will be bound by the advice of the Committee on matters relating to the nation's economy as he implements the next level agenda for a prosperous future. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. The Professor Doin Salami led eight member Presidential Economic Advisory Council was in the State House to submit his first quarterly report on the economy, which President Buhari described as the most delicate and sensitive of all aspects of national life. The report, supported by various interventions, outlined a number of challenging opportunities facing the economy and proffered solutions to most of them. The Council raised concerns over the growth rate of the economy, which is slower than the rate at which the country's population is growing, hence the need for, amongst others, strengthening the national statistical agencies and reforming the procurement processes. You have made very clear your commitment to work towards lifting 100 million people out of poverty over the next decade. This church, your council is taking very seriously and working towards trying to define how that can be delivered upon. For us, whatever is done must be consistent, and please note this, must be consistent with your declared passion for improving the condition of the poor in Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari, after receiving the report, gave the first directive from recommendations made by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation address immediately the observed lapses in coordination between ministries and all agencies of government. He said lack of synergy between ministries, departments and agencies would no longer be tolerated as everyone is working for the country and not for personal interests. We have the same objective to serve the country. We must not develop our personal relationship to be above our overall issues. President Buhari accepted that the Presidential Economic Advisory Council should now brief him more frequently, at least once every six weeks instead of quarterly, and thank the members for their patriotism and commitment in accepting the challenging responsibilities conferred on them. I cannot overemphasize the importance of the task. For Nigeria, international changes in oil prices, bad harvests, conflicts in strategic global locations, a global pandemic like we are experiencing now with coronavirus, tariff changes in major world economies, to mention only a few examples that readily came to mind, can significantly affect our own plans and fortunes. The Presidential Economic Advisory Council resolved to focus on legacy projects by the administration before the year 2023. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari will on Friday depart Abuja for Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to attend the 33rd Ordinary Session of the Heads of State and Government of the African Union. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, says President Buhari will join leaders from the 55 member countries of the African Union to participate in the summit with the theme Silencing the Guns, Creating Conducive Conditions for Africa's development. The President will also attend the 29th Forum of Heads of State and Government of Participating States of the African Peer Review Mechanism and the 27th Session of New Partnership for Africa's Development Heads of State and Government Orientation Committee. The statement added that President Buhari will participate in the high-level meeting of the Peace and Security Council on the situation in the Sahel and Libya and high-level ad hoc committee on South Sudan on the margins of the summit. Garba Shehu says the president will deliver a keynote address at a high-level side event on Stop the War on Children, Dividend of Silence in the Guns. The event is co-sponsored by the governments of Nigeria, Uganda and Norway and Save the Children International. President Buhari and the Nigerian delegation will also participate in other high-level side events in furtherance of Nigeria's national, regional and international goals, priorities and aspirations, namely peace and security, 
countering terrorism and violent extremism, economic development, asset recovery, and fight against corruption. At the end of the AU summit on February 10, the Nigerian president will commence a state visit to Ethiopia on February 11 at the invitation of the Ethiopian Prime Minister. The visit is aimed at strengthening bilateral ties between Nigeria and Ethiopia and reinforcing cooperation in key areas of mutual interest between the two countries. Let's now turn our attention to uh, the judiciary now. The Senate has passed the repeal and reenactment of the Fiscal Responsibility Act bill through second reading. The bill also seeks to provide for the establishment of a Fiscal Responsibility Commission and Council National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunko reports. It was the last plenary of the week and the consideration of the Fiscal Responsibility Act repeal and reenactment bill was one of the major items on the audit paper. The bill seeks to ensure prudent management of Nigeria's resources. The sponsor of the bill, Senator Aisha Tahiru, was clear on the intentions of the bill. There are observed deficiencies that render implementation and enforcement of the provisions of the Act too administrative, especially without clear court punitive measures. Fiscal Responsibility Act Taking cognizance of the fact that we want prudent management of our nation's resources we must begin to speak to some of these intentment. People will now know that they are going to be put on the spot and they are going to be punished when they do not follow the due process. Ensure long-term macroeconomic stability of the national economy, secure greater accountability and transparency in fiscal operations within the medium-term fiscal policy framework. Five high institutions establishment bills were also passed through second reading. Senator Abba Moro drew the attention of the Senate to what he described as a strange disease that has killed four persons in Obi local government area of Benue State and called on health authorities to move into the area to ensure that the disease does not spread. Urge the Center for Disease Control to promptly put up surveillance to contain the disease and see to the treatment of victims and protect others from contacting the same disease. I want to, want to say that uh, we will have wished to know what the effort of the state government and the state epidemiological department has been. We are very close to the people and we are supposed to take action. Meanwhile, the Senate has constituted a 57-member Constitutional Review Committee with representatives from the 36 states of the Federation, the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, and two members each from the six geopolitical zones. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. Well, so talking legislative matters, not the judiciary, as earlier mentioned. Now, the state health, uh, that's the House of Representatives, has commended the federal government's better education service delivery for all programs being implemented in some states of the Federation. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Lee reports that the commendation came during a debate on a matter of public importance from the House Deputy Chief Whip. The number of out-of-school children in Nigeria put at more than 13 million is of concern to the lawmakers who noted that the federal government's better education service project would make an impact, especially when expanded to cover all states in the country. Despite the federal government's interest in curbing the menace of out-of-school children, every state in Nigeria still has a sizable number of our out of school children roaming the streets. House members also adopted a motion on the need to carry out an investigation on the use of paracetamol and bleach on food products in view of the health hazard as moved by Ferdinand Dozier. A high dosage of paracetamol comes from with toxicity that may lead to kidney and renal failures. Plenary featured the adoption of an appeal to authorities to deploy troops to Arojuku community of Abia State to prevent further clashes due to boundary dispute as moved by Nkole Ndukwe and a motion on the urgent need to arrest an outbreak of a disease ravaging farm produce in Kebi State as tabled by Mohamed Jega, while the motion from Awaje Nombek calling for investigations into government and donor-funded agricultural projects was also adopted. Meanwhile, 
a bill amending Raw Materials Research and Development Council has been passed, just as the Constitutional Amendment Bill on Local Government Administration and Financing and the Bill Seeking Regulation of Commodities for Export passed through second reading. As a body corporate to promote, regulate and standardize the production and exportation of such commodities and grains. Twelve bills went through first reading, among them a bill seeking to amend the Central Bank of Nigeria Act and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Act from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. Well, to stay with us here on NTA Network News, we take some messages. We're back shortly. The Nigerian Communications Commission is organizing the annual cybersecurity conference with the theme Strengthening the Security and Resilience of the Nation's Communications Infrastructure. This event is designed to provide a platform for discussion on developing a joint coordination for incidents response for the communications industry, introducing cyber insurance, bridging the cyber workforce gap, strengthening national cooperation, exchange of information, and development of comprehensive strategies that will address the cybersecurity challenges as they relate to the communications industry industry in Nigeria. Participants will include government and security agencies, communications industry, finance industry, and academia. Venue, Congress Hall, Transcorp Hilton Hotel, Abuja. Date, Thursday, February 13th, 2020. Time, 9 a.m. Please register online at www.ncc.gov.ng forward slash cybersec2020. For more inquiries, please call 09-4617-313. Email nmis at ncc.gov.ng. Dr. Henry Ikemadu, Director, Public Affairs, announcer. Getting around heartburn and indigestion can be tricky if you eat too much. Eat food that is too spicy or greasy or lie down after eating. Heartburn and indigestion could always be around the corner. When they come, be prepared with the Addiscon Double Action. It works within three minutes and lasts up to four hours. Gavis come double action. Many causes, one solution. The Industrial Training Fund, ITF, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, currently invites the general public to the official closing ceremony of the National Industrial Skills Development Program. Special guest of honor, Boss Mustafa, Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Distinguished guests, Otumba Richard Adeniye Adebayo, Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Al Haji Muhammad Musa Bello, the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Ambassador Miriam Patagum, the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Chief Host, Sir Joseph Ari, Director General, Industrial Training Fund, Date, Monday, 10th February. 2020. Venue, Shew Musa Yero Adwa Center, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. Invited guests are to be seated by 9.30 a.m. ITF, developing the nation's human resource. Announcer, management. Helen! Hey, where's your mom? Today is her toilet day. What? Toilet day. Tomorrow you're hosting a party and it's a matter of my reputation. Even if you spend your entire day cleaning with all this. It still won't be party ready. Impossible. Challenge. New ticker half x x Even if you use this solution 10 times, it won't give you the same cleaning like half -X. It's new ticker formulation. Sticks to the bowl better, removes old stains and gives you a sparkling clean toilet. Wow! New Apic 10X gives me the freedom from toilet day. New Apic 10X for 10 times better cleaning. This year, the weather conditions Hamatan in Nigeria is harsh, with temperature dropping very low in some parts of the country. Many underprivileged children are exposed to these harsh weather conditions putting them at risk to all sorts of respiratory infections with devastating consequences. We request well-meaning Nigerians to kindly donate warm clothing, blankets, beverages, soap, moisturizers and other essential items for the benefit of these children. Get involved to support displaced and underprivileged children exposed to these harsh weather conditions. Powered by Aisha Buhari Foundation. Wait, is it not 
today or four days when my girls won't come visit me. I need to go and expire. Oh, but my guys, they can't follow me. Watch this match. I must want to fold the hand. Hey! Hey, Bill! Hey! Hey! What's happening now? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but my subscription don't expire. The match is not on my GoTV package. Now you're all be that. I beg you, give me your phone. I think I show you how you go take Dua for my GoTV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my GoTV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change wow. your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast wow. of your payment history. Ah. Oh. With the call, yeah. the, is there. the new My Go TV app is everything you need in one place. So, what are you waiting for? Download My Go TV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. Go TV, live it, love it. Welcome back. You're still watching NTA Network News with me, Joseph Johnson in Abuja. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has deregistered 74 political parties for non-performance during the 2019 general elections, bringing the number of parties in Nigeria to 18. The announcement was made by the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu in Abuja. A date has also been announced for the governorship elections in Ondo and Edo states. A few minutes later, it became a public knowledge. 74 political parties are hereby deregistered. Out of the 92 political parties, 74 could not escape the sledgehammer of Section 225A of the 1999 Constitution, which empowers INEC to deregister non performing political parties. And these are the justifications. One, breach of any of the requirements for registration as a political party. Failure to win at least 25 percent of the votes cast in one state of the federation in a presidential election, or 25 percent of the votes cast in one local government area of a state in a governorship election. With this nullification, the list of successful political parties were announced: APC, PDP, SDP, ABGA. And YPP are among the 18 successful ones. However, Boot Party made the list because court ordered its registration after the general elections in 2019. While Action People's Party is enjoying the protection of the law court. Meanwhile, the political cloud of Edo and Ondo states are now open. Governorship contest though limited to only the 18 political parties, will take place on the 19th of September 2020 in Edo State, while Ondo State will have its own day of decision on the 10th of October 2020. I wish to remind all parties and candidates that violence during party progress and election campaigns are acts punishable under our electoral laws. Best of luck as the countdown begins. Mayor Ogidi, MT News. Let's talk security matters now because the Nigeria police force gladdened the minds of Nigerians Wednesday this week when it conducted an operation in Kuduru Forest in Kaduna State, inflicting serious damage to terrorist group, killing many of them, including top two commanders and arresting three others. Francis from reports that the operation was not without casualties on the part of the Nigerian police. It was the biggest and most successful operation carried out by Operation Puff Ada since it was set up last year. At the end of it, the police announced that it successfully neutralized more than 250 high-profile members of the Ansaru terror group. First Public Relations Officer, DSP Frank Mba, however, said the police lost Inspector Mohamed Abubakar as a result of injuries sustained, while 13 other officers, including the pilots and co-pilots of its helicopter, also had various degrees of injuries and are receiving treatment. We'll be burdened even the more to embark on similar operations across the country. We promise Nigerians that we will not rest on our oars until we are able to effectively 
take back every inch of our soil, every inch of our public space under the control of the criminals. DSP Frank Mba enjoined members of the public living around Berenguari Axis to be on the lookout for fleeing bandits, especially those with bullet wounds, and reports every suspicious behavior to the police. Frank's is from NTA News. A bit on judiciary now. Amended charges have been filed in the ongoing prosecution of leader of the proscribed Islamic movement of Nigeria, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki, and his wife Zinat. Major Ma Adamu reports that this has necessitated further adjournment of the case. The absence of the defendants on held ground is a stated adjournment of hearing to the 24th of February, as by law the amended charges must be read to them and their pleas taken in person by representative before trial can commence. The amendment by the prosecution was due to inability to apprehend the third and fourth defendants who are at large, and the earlier charges did not reflect this, hence narrowing the scope of the trial to the thou of El Zagzaki and his wife in the amended charges. The defendants, the third, fourth defendant, must be they must reflect in the copy of the charge that they are at large. That's what the state has did, did and filed and serve the defense counsel. However, we apply to the court to allow the defendants access to their personal physicians. In the meantime, the court presided over by Justice Gideon Kurada has granted the request of the defense counsel to allow the defendant access to their personal physicians. In Kaduna, my Jama Adamu, NTA News. And a state high court in Akure Ondo State has refused to grant the bail application filed for the release of founder Shotitobire Church, Prophet Alpha Babatunde, and six others, standing trial on a two count charge of aiding the kidnap of a one year old child, Gold Kolawale, in November last year. Now, the court, however, opted for accelerated hearing on the matter. Olaji de Bello reports. The founder, Sotitobire, may represent the Prophet Alpha Babatunde and six others pleaded not guilty to the two counts bordering on aiding the kidnap of a one-year-old child in the church premises on November 15, 2019. Counsel to the accused persons, Olusha Laoke, argued the bail application on behalf of his clients told the court that granting them bail will enable the accused persons to be fully prepared for their defense. Opposing the application, the prosecuting counsel, Grace Oluwaroku, maintained that it will be risky to grant them bail going by the nature of the charge. We are not just interested in justice. We are also interested in the truth. And that's why we call on all the law enforcement agencies not to shut um, their doors to other forms of investigation. The presiding judge, Justice Ayedu Odishola, refused to grant the accused person's bail and subsequently ordered accelerated hearing, which is to commence from Monday, March 16, 2020. Elijah Bello reporting there. Now, maintaining harmonious working relationship and upholding virtues of discipline among associates or have been uh, identified as key to achieving good governance and national development. This was the focus of the induction held in honor of the newly appointed Federal Government Permanent Secretaries in Kanu. Yahasu Hassan Barao reports that five papers presented at the retreat dwelt extensively on the essence of teamwork. A report. Civil service remains the most vital machinery through which government delivers its policies and programs to the citizenry. This, however, can only be achieved when stakeholders work in harmony and maintain cordial relationships. The recent appointment of permanent secretaries by the Buhari's administration was geared to support government drive in the transformation vision to the next level. So the management of, info, of government information is very, very important. We are mindful that the Freedom of Information uh, Act in place, information that are required from government would be released through the appropriate channel. The two of them that are key people in the MDAs work together, then the ministry will be able to move ahead. So yeah, whatever we do, it should be subjected to scrutiny and uh, we've told the newly appointed permanent secretaries that uh, they should be ready and Nigerians would like to know how their resources are spent. Some permanent secretaries who describe the retreat as timely pledged to ensure professionalism and impartiality 
in the discharge of their duties, and above all, promote policies and programs that will touch the lives of the people. Essentially to guide the permanent secretaries to what to expect and how to conduct themselves and ensure that the government that appointed them meets the set objective for which they are appointed. I believe it will shorten our learning curve and hasten the way we improve the quality of work we do. Among papers presented were strategic leadership for optimum performance and result and building a capable civil service by permanent secretaries. In Kanu, Yohana Sahasambaro, NTA News. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is set to leverage on NTA's reach to effectively provide enlightenment for Nigerians to appreciate payment of tax for nation building. Already, the machinery is in motion with the visit of FIRS Management Board to NTA Management, led by the Chairman Mohammed Nam Na Nami. Benny Adams reports. From assumption of office a couple of months ago, the nation's chief revenue collector, Mohamed Nami, has been on his feet, meeting all that matter in the quest to increase the revenue figures of the country, coming from dwindling fortunes being recorded lately. NTA is the latest point of call for the new FIRS management, and the mission is to advocate stronger collaboration for enlightenment of Nigerians to be faithful to their obligation of tax payment. Issues that has to do with uh, the sensitization of taxpayers, the policies of government should be the thing that you people should assist us in promoting. The Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, reminded FIRS of the challenge ahead, but was quick to add that, despite NTA being partially commercialized, NTA remains alive to its social responsibility to Nigerians and will do whatever it takes to help grow the economy. Our reach is second to none, you know, uh, in Nigeria. So we'll work assiduously with you, you know, as members of the same family, that is the federal government family, to ensure that um, your tenure, you know, uh, uh, becomes a very resoundingly successful one. The board used the visit to also discuss the ongoing Africa Tax Administration Forum, where a new strategy for taxing the informal sector is in the offing. Some of the things that we're looking to do as a board is also um, ensuring that we have different tactics for different sectors. The informal sector in Africa is set to account for up to 90% of GDP in some countries. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. Let's take you to Burundi now, where the state government is to enact laws to curtail the rising cases of gender-based violence. Governor Babagana Umar uh, Zulum stated this when he received members of Northern States Governor's Wives Forum at the government house, Maiduguri Mohamed Goni reports. The Northern States Governor's Wives Forum is in Borno for equally meeting. Governor Babagana Umar Zulum appreciated the forum for identifying with the people of Borno at their trial morning. He assured the governor's wife of the support of the Northern States Governor's Forum to enable them to improve on the laws of women and children in the state. We shall also support in improving maternal health care delivery system with a view to reducing infant and maternal mortality rates. The governor also stressed commitment to Borno State Government to promote girl child education as a tool to reduce poverty, mortality rate, and to protect the vulnerable children. He made a case for the growing number of children roaming streets of northern Nigeria and called for a holistic approach to address the challenge and further advise the forum to promote education of the poor children. Wife of the KB State Governor, Dr. Zaina Bagudu, noted achievements recorded by the present administration in the state, including infrastructural development. She highlighted efforts made by the Northern State Governor's Wives Forum to include reaching out to IDPs, working to end gender-based violence, substance and drug abuse among others. She appealed to Northern State Governor's Forum to support them to enable the forum to impact on the lives of the people. Wife of the Borno State Governor, Dr. Palmacha Babagana said, the governor's wife visited Governor Zulum as a mark of respect. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Kouni, NTNs. 
Meanwhile, the SDG Goal 5 has placed gender equality and women's empowerment at the heart of its efforts to accelerate progress towards the SDGs. Uh, regrettably, while some indicators of gender equality are progressing, such practice as female genital mutilation continues to be high. In this special report, Basi Taekbang examines the reasons behind female genital mutilation in Nigeria. It is said that he who wears the shoe knows where it pinches. Who else could tell the story of female genital mutilation than the woman who has gone through the process? 45-year-old Christy had her genital part cut by her mother at the early years of her life. She has three daughters and out of ignorance also subjected her first daughter to the same practice just to fulfill cultural demands. And the belief in my tradition there is that if a woman is not done, that she will be loosed. And they also believe that giving birth will be difficult. So it was done. Christy is not alone. Lola here shares her own experience. The reason behind it is patriarchy, as in the men want to control the sexuality of the women. Because why, why are you saying um, if you don't cut a woman, she'll be promiscuous? It doesn't make any sense. There is a belief in some quarters that the practice of female genital mutilation is to reduce a woman's libido. But does this really work? And what we found out around, we've asked, we've done the research, we've asked people that have, we've asked survivors, survivors have been there to speak to people that, no, that is not, it does not have any benefits. Especially as it's been done in some of the remote areas, villages, it's a terrible practice that we're actually hoping that um, government would develop proper policies towards a total, a to, not just, you know, preventing it, but stopping it. Although female genital mutilation has been in practice for more than a thousand years, but there are reasons to think that it could end in a single generation. That is why the United Nations strives for its full eradication by 2030. In the spirit of Sustainable Development Goal 5, Basi Taikbang, NTA News. Now, the next set of reports will be presented by Hinginu in Lagos. Hinginu. Hello, Joseph. Thanks for joining us in Lagos. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, says criminal activities threatening the security and peace of the country are organized and can be effectively tackled with the enactment of law that makes identification necessary. The minister, while delivering a lecture on insecurity, taking action against organized crime, was unequivocal on the need to strengthen multi-level policing. Michael Olale reports. The Congressional Research Service, in one of its findings, revealed that between January and June 2019, there were 196 shootings, which claimed 196 lives in the United States. This analogy is what the Minister of Works and Housing used to exemplify the fact that crime and insecurity are global challenges that must be frontally stamped out. He identified collective mobilization, information sharing, restoration of landlord association, and clamped down on abandoned and empty spaces, which he believes provide unmonitored accommodation for criminals as strategies that must be adopted in the fight against insecurity. People should not remain anonymous in any society. I fix that responsibility with the attorneys general of all the states and the speakers and legislators of the houses of assembly. So go to your house of assembly member that they should look at the existing legislation and take steps to pass laws that make identification compulsory. Like the Minister of Works and Housing, former Inspector General of Police Solomon Arase is an advocate of multi-level policing but was emphatic on ways of expanding the scope of social contracts with the citizens. Citizen responsibilities include participation in electing their leaders and rendering assistance to appropriate and lawful agencies in the maintenance of law and order. The theme of the annual public lecture is security of citizens as a social contract. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. 
talking maritime now. Nigeria is considering an international ship register to help grow its fleet and reposition its dominance in global commercial trade. At an interactive session in Lagos, key players agreed on some guidelines aimed at strengthening the capacity of indigenous ship owners. Nigeria currently operates a closed ship registry with about 2,725 active vessels of various capacity according to the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency with various innovation in the shipping sector channeled towards driving the growth of the industry. The country could only rank second in Africa behind Liberia which operates an open registry. The plan going forward is for the country to operate a second register using the closed register to develop indigenous capacity. If more ships are trading within our cabotage regime, it means that mostly they will engage mostly Nigerians. Even when international ships are under the Nigerian uh, ship registry, they will give preference to Nigerian seafarers. So there's a direct relationship between the size of our tonnage and the opportunities for seafarers. As prelude to efficient regulation and prevention of unseaworthiness and substandard ships entry into the country, seven new security certificates with unique electronic features were unveiled. Fraudulent practices do not actually support good business. It does not support our national image. Therefore, it's the right step in the right direction to make sure that we eliminate fraud. The number of ships that are registered in Nigeria has shoot up. Today, we stand as the largest uh, register or flag African flag. Nigeria is not just desirous of improving its global ranking in international maritime trade, but perfecting modalities for safeguarding the interests of investors. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. That's it from Lagos. The news continues after this timeout. <coughs> so through it, it's often caused by bacteria and viruses. It feels like they're having a party. You need Strepsils. It soothes the pain, plus it fights the germs with two germ-killing actives. Double power in one lozenge. Bye-bye, sore throat. Take Strepsils. Everyone lives happily ever after. Aren't you gonna have a cookie? Not until you wash your hands with antibacterial soap. Germs are like dragons hiding everywhere. I also have to conquer a dragon, auntie. Me too. We can. Children are constantly exposed to diseases that cause colds, flu, and diarrhea. Mothers know that washing your hands with antibacterial soap stops the spread of germs and diseases. So you have to wash your hands before touching or eating and when you come home after a long day and after using the toilet. I love my family and I know you love yours too. That is why I now regularly wash my hands with antibacterial soap. Would you join me as we wash our hands to protect my job? The Better Clean My Jar Initiative is in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources. It's really tough right now. It's hard to expand my business. Exactly. You know many farmers depend on me. All these banks saying they don't see my vision. <coughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Sorry for interrupting. That's not exactly true. How do you know? Yeah. I'm living proof. Mind if I join you? Not at all. Just last year, I had planned to expand my hospitality business. It was tough, but I met the right people. So, who exactly are these people? My bank, FCMB. Eddie, their bills on the house. I forgot to mention, this is one of our hotels. Have a great night, gentlemen. With the right guys who believe in your visions, get to your desired destination is easier and quicker. Let's help you take the next step. FCMB, my bank, and I.
information, they important, just like your identity. Now the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You fit change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why GoTV fit call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel, <laughs> I time for my phone in that way because now my correct phone number they for move. <laughs> Look me again, no. Make you go do your own. Thanks for staying with us. We are now back in Abuja. Challenges arising from illegal immigration of Nigerians into Germany are receiving positive redress with a new action plan on migration developed by the German government to promote legal migration through information sharing with Nigeria. Successes in this regard will translate to Nigerians gaining legal employment as skilled labor in Germany. Onengi Fine Face reports. Germany is in need of skilled labor to help sustain and improve its economic and social development. In the face of global migration crisis, the German government has developed a national action plan on migration. It's a paradigm shift to diminish illegal immigration and improve legal migration. The aim is simple, provide the needed skilled labor in Germany and achieve same within established legal framework. Meeting with the National Commission for Refugees, Migration and Internally Displaced Persons is one of several steps initiated by the German government to support skilled Nigerians to gain legal entry into Germany to meet its labor needs. Und dazu zählt für uns Aufklärung, Information. Part of this strategy means that we need to inform and support people on ways in order to arrive in Germany. And especially since Nigeria is such a young country, such a dynamic country, and we have the future doctors, engineers, and other skilled professions, we look very carefully about possible ways of informing properly will continue to advocate for joint bilateral agreements with the government of Germany for the promotion of more regular migration. We understand that aspiring migrants will need to be equipped with the necessary skills and learn and understand the processes of regular migration. The partnership will also assist Germany and Nigeria for solutions to the root causes of illegal migration and build better international cooperation. In Abuja, Onengye Fine Face, NT News. Let's now join Pam in Makudi more. Hello, Pam. We're sorry about that. It seems like our Makudi Network Center is having an audio challenge. But let's just take some messages now. We are back shortly. Lassa fever occurs when a person gets bitten by a rat carrying the Lassa virus. It is also contacted through the consumption of foods that have been contaminated by either the saliva, urine, or excreta of the rats. Lassa fever is deadly. So, protect yourself and loved ones from it. Keep rats away from your homes. Ensure that leftover foods are properly covered at night and heat up properly before consumption. Wash fruits properly before you eat. Maintain regular hand wash with soap and water as well as environmental sanitation. Report all feverish conditions and bleeding from the nose or mouth to the health facility nearest to you and don't indulge in self-medication. This message is from the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. Channel, we be watching.
church just now don't work out. No panic. Can you say no panic? You go do it by yourself like ABC. Oh yeah. Press the menu button on top of your remote. Scroll up and down till you see information central. Then press OK. Mm, press OK. Check the signal strength and quality. If the signal strength and quality pass 70, make you press the exit button, go back. Go advanced options, then choose installation, then go to reset and press OK. Yeah, press OK. Wow. Wow. Now you say fit catch all those channels will be one miss rule by yourself. <laughs> yes. Make your groove for no loss. You see as I do am I huh? And I see as I do am. Go TV. Live it. Love it. <laughs> and I see as we do am. Let's quickly bring you sports now. Team Nigeria weightlifters set to depart Friday for Uzbekistan for the silver face qualifiers of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. As Oyodeji Makinde tells us more on sports updates. Team Nigeria is set to participate in the silver face of the weightlifting Olympic qualifiers holding in Tashkent, Uzbekistan from February to 14. The team, made of six weightlifters and four officials, will depart Nigeria Friday from the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and competes in five weight categories of 49, 55, 59, 61, and 76 kilograms. We are ready for the competition, and I pray that by God's grace, we shall go there and make Nigeria proud. Federal Government College, Daura Katsina State, are still celebrating being champions of the 15th edition of the